Good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Elijah Juan McCagney. I use he and they series pronouns. A lot has happened since the last time we spoke together, since our last commemoration. Last summer, we saw nationwide protests as another generation fights against a national betrayal that took root 156 years ago. Now we are experiencing white fragility in action at the intersections of black advancement and black resilience. We are experiencing the unwillingness for allies to desegregate their lives because to be a strong ally requires you to assume that racism is everywhere. If that sounds daunting, imagine being black or brown in America. Additionally, to reconcile this inconvenient truth, we must acknowledge that America was built on stolen land, as well as the profiting from enslavement enforced through brutality. That was the past, yet somehow it manifests in the present. But these present day events are not singular moments in our history because we often overlooked the same violence of Jim Crow laws in the South after reconstruction has led to modern day political amnesia around the healing from our his history as this country. This is my third year sharing my call to action. In the past, I've spoken about the environment in which I grew up in, the environment I was socialized to believe that racism and violence were endemic to it. I've seen white rage in action and the inaction of black silence by those I've considered kin. I've even had my hand slapped if I dare attempt to speak my truth against my own injustice. Additionally, I'm now asking you to mobilize your mind and stop debating the urgency to confront racism. I'm asking you to disrupt for greater justice, a justice that is democratic, that is advocated on all sides and at the points where they intersect. This is time to be radical. This is time to be bold. This is time to be authentic, to be genuine, to transform when it comes to what we know and what we have known and to what we know we can do as what we've been called to accomplish. Why do you ask? Well, this past year, we lost Congressman Elijah Cummings and Congressman John Lewis both of whom I share a deep fraternal and brotherly bond as fellow men of Sigma. These brothers reinforce the importance of honoring our history as well as our responsibility to it while still being bold enough to write a new narrative because we have obligations to transcend. Transcend because the personal will become political it will become institutional because it's national, it's global. Before we can transcend and mobilize the mind, we must address the following uncomfortable truths. You can be oppressed and still be an oppressor. Meaning you can be victimized and also be the victimizer. I'm asking you to reconcile with this state of being. Your privilege can often lead you to believe you can decide what other people need and deserve when it comes to their liberation. I'm asking you to disrupt this state of knowing. We are often trapped in the nightmare of those who cannot see beyond themselves. So please stop demonizing the oppressed the marginalized, the invisible, disenfranchised for trying to survive. I'm urging you to understand the system in order to understand your complicity within it. 
to those who consider themselves to be allies, it seems some of you measure yourself by what you do for others rather than who you are to them. Again, it seems some of you measure yourselves by what you do for others rather than who you are to them. To me, this reflects some unresolved insecurities regarding your worth. Unpack that, do better. To those who have experienced trauma or injustice, some people often say they want healing, yet they fight to be right. And that fight reflects resistance, that struggle to see or know or hear when it comes to considering the other viewpoint or the other side or the other solution because they refuse to diverge from their own perception of their story that fuels their allegiance to their trauma rather than being agents in their liberation. And while we're on the topic of healing, friends, I want to make you aware of some additional things. Number one, just because I feel for you doesn't mean I can heal for you. Number two, just because you mean no harm doesn't mean you do no harm. Number three, your healing is not owed to anyone else. Four, you cannot heal for someone else. Five, you cannot do the healing for someone else. Six, another person's healing or lack thereof is not about you or their feelings for you. Seven, your healing should not and cannot be tied to another person's feelings. Eight, no one owes you their healing. Nine, your healing is not owed to anyone else. And 10, you can only heal within yourself, for yourself, through yourself, and on your own timeline. So adjust your perspective and expectations accordingly. Lastly, given the recent events as well as the ones that have transpired last week or even last year, it made me think of the following African proverb. When the elephants fight, the grass suffers. I repeat, when the elephants fight, the grass suffers. Who are the elephants? Who or what is the grass? I'll leave that to you, but please know once the grass is damaged, who will nourish it back to health? So I leave you with the following phrase. You get what you nourish. You get what you nourish. So nourish boundaries, nourish civility, nourish accountability, nourish love, nourish respect, nourish forgiveness, nourish healing, nourish commitment, and nourish humanity. Otherwise, you cannot give what you do not have or have ever received. Thank you. <laughs>